Welcome to Closure in Python. This session talks of closures, defining them, their benefits, and takes some examples. What's a closure? Let's find out. This code has two functions, an outer function and an inner function within this. The inner function prints a greeting and the outer function makes a call to the inner function. The outer function takes one argument and the inner function doesn't take any. When we make a call to the outer function with the argument IUC, the inner function prints hello IUC. But how does it know? How does it know we provided the argument IUC to the outer function? Well, name is non-local to inner. This means it can read name but not modify it. Remember when we discussed variable scope in Python? If this confuses you right now, you should revisit the lecture on variable scope. Anyway, a closure happens when a nested function references a value in its enclosing scope as inner references name, which really belongs to outer. But wait, this is not a closure yet. So then what is a closure? This function has an outer and an inner function. The inner function prints a value and the outer function returns this inner function. Now func is outer of 7 and it prints 7. Let's compare it to our previous code. Well, this one had outer make a call to inner. This new one has it return it instead. Now when we say func is outer of 7, we're done executing outer and we've stored its value in the name func. This means outer has already executed inner and returned it. So now how does func remember x is 7 for inner? Here's how. With closures, some data gets attached to code. Then it is remembered even when this variable goes out of scope. That's what's happening here. 7 gets attached to x. This allows it to work even if we delete outer before making a call to func. So when do you have a closure? You have a closure when a nested function references a value in its enclosing scope. Three conditions must be met for a closure. There must be nested functions. The inner function should refer to a variable that's non-local to it. Also, the enclosing scope or the outer function must return the inner function. Using a closure brings with it the following advantages. Since closures let us refer to non-local variables, we don't need to declare global ones. This is data hiding. If you have a class with only a few methods, you can use a closure instead. Closure is also how we implement decorators. Also, a closure lets us call a function from outside its scope, like we called inner in our example. But before we leave, let's take a couple more examples. This code has inner modify result and return it. Func is outer of 7, func of 3 is 42. So what is x and what is n? x is 7 and n is 3. So result is 7 into 3 plus 7 into 2 plus 7 into 1. This is equivalent to 7 into 6 to 7 into 6 which is 42. Now when x is 3 and n is 3, the result is 18. 3 into 3 plus 3 into 2 plus 3 into 1 is 18. In these examples, the inner function can modify the value of result because we declare it non-local to inner. And then we make it return result. Finally, the outer function returns the inner. One more. Here, the outer function takes a function as an argument and has the inner function call this function to print the message it takes as argument. The function will pass to outer is say hi. This takes a message and prints it Let's make a call to outer with the function say hi and call this myfunk. Call this with the value hello 
to send as an argument to inner and it prints out hello. Isn't the concept of closure interesting? Let's talk in the discussion forum.